Hi there, and welcome back to another class with Amazing Psychology. I'm Priya Verghese, and today we're going to take a look at lifespan characteristics. Okay, great. So let's flip over to page number 12 in our um, course material. This is block one, page number 12 and section 1.5. That's where the characteristics of lifespan development is mentioned. So if you can flip over to that portion, it would be great. And we can just go through the material together. Um, if you read the first sentence, we can see lifespan perspective argues that significant modifications take place throughout development. Okay, so in the previous classes that we went through, we've seen that development is not a static process. It's a very dynamic process. It involves a lot of changes that happen throughout the entire lifetime of a human being. So within these changes that take place, you can see that the developmental changes that happen have different characteristics. And that's what we're going to look at right now. So um, if you want to know what the meaning of characteristic is, let's consider an orange. So if you say you, you're trying to find the characteristics of an orange, you would say that an orange is mostly orangish in color. Um, it may range from light orange to dark orange but it's mostly orangish in color. It has a very citrusy smell. Um, it is sour and sweet in taste. When it's not ripe, it is sour. When it is entirely ripe, it is sour and sweet. See, there are lots of things that are common. And these are different things that you can use to characterize a, an orange. In the same way, human development has several characteristics that are commonly found um, amongst all the human population and these factors influence how development happens within a human being. So let's look at some of them. One is multidimensional, the other is multidirectional, there's plasticity, there's multidisciplinary, there's contextual. I know these, are what, these words may seem confusing to you at this point but once we finish going through this class it will be very very easy to understand. So let's just skip this entire middle portion, we'll come back to that later and go to this last line. These characteristics for, form a family of beliefs which specify a coherent view of the nature of development. So each of these characteristics that we just talked about, multidirectional, plastic, multidisciplinary, all of these together give you a very comprehensive and coherent picture of how development happens. One in its own does not give you enough information, but all of them together give you a very good view of how development happens in a human being. So let's take a look at the first one, lifelong development. So what this means is that development is a lifelong process. It doesn't happen in just one stage. It happens throughout the life. There are two aspects to this particular belief. The first is that the potential for development extends over an entire lifespan, just as we mentioned before. And the second is that development may involve processes which are not present at birth, but emerge through the lifespan. So what this means is that development is not stuck at one particular stage in your lifetime. Like It's not like you only develop during your childhood and adolescence and after that you just don't have any change in you there is a lifelong development process. And secondly, some changes that happen or developments that happen at a particular stage need not be present throughout the entire lifespan. So let's take a look at uh, the factors which influence how these developments occur. Your individual experiences and your psychological orientation dictates how the development may be different from stage to stage in a human being. Now let's look at the second point, which is development is multidimensional, which means there are many dimensions to it. What this actually means is that development cannot be described by just one single criterion. Now what kind of criterion is the author talking about here? He's talking about biological criteria, cognitive, social, emotional, psychological. All of these are domains within development and we just studied the domains of uh, lifespan development in the previous class so you must be remembering that. So all of these factors individually cannot completely describe how development occurs but together they give you a good view. That's why it's called multidimensional. The next is development is multidirectional. 
what this means is that when you say unidirectional it means just one path when you say it's multi-directional it means there are several paths so that's exactly what this means as well there is no single normal path that development takes and so therefore you can't categorize and say this is the normal and only way that a person can develop healthy development can occur through various ways okay so um, what we can see here is that your ability takes you through different directions and your abilities change some of them change some of them remain constant there's a different way in which normal people develop you see no two families are the same you may be living in the same place but your friend might be living across the street the way he is raised in his family and you are raised in your family is different because of several factors but that doesn't mean that his upbringing is wrong and your upbringing is the only right way both are right both result in healthy human beings and therefore development is multi-directional the next is development is plastic when you talk about plasticity you might think of something like a plastic container but plasticity actually refers to flexibility your ability to flex and include or accommodate a situation so if you look at the plasticity mentioned here it's the within person variability which is possible for a particular behavior or development so what does that mean when you look at a certain development or a behavior how much is a person capable of maintaining that development or capable of maintaining a constancy in the behavior without too much of change in spite of having environmental factors or other factors that are influencing it let's take an example um, there used to be a treatment where when infants are born if they have some sort of epilepsy problems a certain portion of the brain hemisphere is removed shortly after birth and it was seen that the brain was plastic enough the body was plastic enough to be able to overcome those problems or the the loss of that hemisphere and the functions were recovered because the brain reorganized itself so here you can see that even though an environmental factor happened where the hemisphere was removed the body was capable of overcoming that and still maintaining functionality and regaining its capacity to operate with functions in that hemisphere because of its plastic nature so um, plasticity involves the degree to which characteristics change or remain stable i hope that's clear to you the next is development is contextual so when you say contextual you're actually talking about with reference to what is with reference to you are talking about um, when you consider a particular topic with reference to that topic what is development like so let's take a look over here there are various contexts let me just make that clear let's take a look here if you're growing up in a rural environment there are different factors that influence you and therefore those factors have an impact on your development in the same manner if you're living in a very social environment where all the people gather together for meetings and parties and uh, there's a lot of community activities versus if you're living in a place where nobody really interacts with the other person you don't know who the next door neighbor is uh, you don't go out to play with the kids in the in in the locality then you're living in a non-social environment so your development in that highly social environment and in that very low social environment is going to be extremely different that's why you're saying with the context of rural environments how is development seen in the context of a city environment what kind of development is seen hmm? so there are different types of contexts one is the person's biological makeup one is the psychological environment that they are in and the other is the social historical and cultural context let's take a look at the next one which is development is multidisciplinary so i guess you understand what that means it involves several disciplines okay now the sources of age related changes do not lie within the province of any one discipline what do you mean by age related changes age related changes is basically just another way of calling development because development involves changes throughout the lifespan which means changes throughout the age so age related changes is basically development sources of developmental changes do not lie within the province of any one discipline 
So what do you mean by any one discipline? What are the different disciplines? There's psychological disciplines, there's social disciplines, there's linguistics, there's anthropology, neuroscience. So there are different, different branches of studying development of a human being and the development cannot be consolidated or understood completely by just studying one discipline. You have to study all the disciplines to get a comprehensive understanding. The next is development involves growth, maintenance and regulation. So when you see this, these three terms are three different stages. You grow in spurts, you have to maintain the growth and you have to regulate the functions within the body. So there is this constant dynamic conflict and competition between these three, um, these three forms that is necessary for proper human development. If one of them is out of whack, or one of them is just not functioning properly, growth doesn't happen, I mean development doesn't happen properly. So suppose your growth is not well, or and you're still maintaining your functions and you're regulating everything, but you're not growing, development doesn't happen. In the same way, if you're growing and you're able to maintain it, but your body hormones and regulation is not correct, again, you're gonna have problems. So healthy development requires a balance between all these three functions. The next is development is embedded in history. So what this basically means is that historical factors affect how development occurs, which basically means what time period we are growing up in affects our development. You can understand that very easily by the, same t the term generation gap. Your grandfather and grandmother wouldn't show the same development or cognitive capacity as the small kids in the 21st century today who are so versatile with using smartphones. There's a very big difference because of the historical periods in which they grew up. The next is normative age graded influences. What is normative? It's just another term for normal age graded influences. When you say age graded, it means in a specific age. So what this actually refers to is what are the normal influences that occur within a specific age group. Now there are biological and environmental influences that affect how a person grows in a particular age and this is seen to be similar for all people within that same age group. One example is all people go through the phase of childhood, all people go through the phase of puberty and this is common, it's a biological thing that happens to all human beings unless of course you have some sort of illness that is stopping it. Then the next one is normative history graded influences. So as we just talked about before, normative means normal. So what are the normal historical influences that impact a human being? Again, there are biological and environmental influences um, that are common to people who live within a specific time period or a specific generation. For example, you must have heard of the Great Depression that occurred and how there were no jobs and people struggled. Then there were um, certain characteristics that people showed who went through the World War I and World War II uh, problems. Then there's the AIDS epidemic and how that has influenced people. So all of these common factors that influence people over a generation are seen to impact the way that they develop. And finally, we have non-normative events. So what does that mean? It's not normal. So what that actually refers to is unusual occurrences that have an influence on an individual that most other individuals of the same age group or generation do not go through. An example is the death of a parent when you're at a very young age or being chronically ill when you are small or winning a lottery. So why I say it's to a specific age is because once you cross your 60s and your 70s, it's a given that your parents will die. That's normal for people of that particular age span. But for a child who is maybe between two years and 15 years, it's not normal to have a parent die that young. So that influences or impacts that person or the individual very deeply. So I hope this was very clear to you. I also have some points noted towards the end of uh, this presentation and the video will have slides with information on it, which is basically just concise notes of what we went through right now. So if you go through that and you can take down points, it would be very nice. I'm sure it will be helpful for you. 
I hope you enjoyed today's class. These are some basic notes of all the topics that we covered when we read through the block together. Uh, you can pause the video and take down notes. I'm sure it will be helpful for you. Make sure that you always keep your notes in the same notebook so you can refer to it easily when it becomes the exam time. So these are all the main points of some of the characteristics of lifespan development that we looked at, which is lifelong, multidimensional, multidirectional, plastic. Please pause and take notes. In this slide, we'll be looking at contextual, multidisciplinary, involvement of growth, maintenance and regulation, and historical factors that are characteristic to lifespan development. And this is the last slide involving the last three topics, which is normative age-graded influences, normative history-graded influences, and non-normative events. So I hope you enjoyed today's class. I would really, really appreciate it if you could give me feedback on how you liked it, what changes you would uh, like to have in the class. And also, um, if you could hit the subscribe button so you um, are able to get all the videos that I make in this channel. And also, please hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time I put out a video. I'm hoping that these videos that I make will help you quickly go through the portion and be prepared at time in time for your exams. So this is Priya Varghese signing off. I hope to see you in the next class. Thank you.